Yes, sir. Thank you. I think we'll have, tonight we'll have the, um, the, 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 and, um, Do I do that as a bottle, sir? No, glass only, glass only. Um, and we'll have the, let's have the, the Great American, uh, Cabernet, Cabernet. Excellent. Right. That moment you know you're gonna need something a little stronger than wine. We've all been here before, poor guy. But to all the all right. brave men just trying to get to second base, we feel your pain. A little research, a few questions, and these tips are definitely gonna get you locked in for date number two. And also keep some cash in your pocket. So the next time you plan your big date, do a little bit of research. Ask her some questions. Find out what she likes. What food is she passionate about? And from there you can nail down a restaurant. Familiarize yourself with the menu, with the wine list, with the pricing, and that way there's no surprise. When you get to the restaurant, have an appetizer ready that you want to order. Order the appetizer and a bottle of wine that's going to pair perfectly. That's why we're here with Steven, and he's an expert who's going to get us through any dining experience. Welcome back. Thanks, Steven. When I smell a wine, I break it up in three categories. The first category I call produce. It's any kind of fruit you'll find at your grocery store, you know. When I go to the grocery store, I like to train my nose a lot. Yeah. I pick up green apples, red apples, smell them, see the difference of them. You'll be surprised how different each fruit really is. And like that's a, a really, that, sorry, that's a really great tip though. Next time, just anyone interested in wine, you're at a grocery store, start really exploring the different exactly. smells. Yeah, it's, it's train your nose. That's a, your nose is a muscle. It must be trained like any other part of your body. The second one I call is more your earthiness. That's your, you know, your limestones, your min you know, your minerals, your soil, your tobaccos, your leathers of the world. That's what comes in the second part. And that, and you are gonna smell those in the wine. Absolutely. Once you pick up on them, because you've smelt leather before. Sure. You know what tobacco smells like. When you know what you're looking for, it's easier to pick up on it. Okay. And then the third one I call is your baking goods. That is your cinnamons your clothes, your spices, and that's how the wine finishes. And then when you have a great wine, usually, you can pick up on little parts of each of those, you know, because it's well balanced. You know, you start with your produce, you get a little fruit, and you come and you get your leathers or your minerals or your tobaccos, and then you finish with some spice, cloves, or cinnamon, you know? Now, how about we just practice a little bit? A great starter wine I always like to do is either Pinot Grigio or Sauvignon Blanc. Me, I'm more personal to Sauvignon Blanc, and this is one I carry on my wine list. This is the New Harbor Sauvignon Blanc. It's based out of New Zealand, and it's in the Marlboro region. And this is a good date wine? A great starter wine. Okay. It's very approachable. I find it as a sexy wine. When I pick wine for my wine list, I want them to be sexy. I want you to feel when you drink it that you're like, oh, I like this. You know what I'm saying? That's the point of drinking wine. You don't drink wine to be down. You drink wine to be, you know, feel good about yourself. Yeah, it's a first date wine. We want to keep it light and fun. I mean, the Greeks called it what? The fruit of the gods? Yeah. Now let's practice what we just learned. We're going to go back over the four S's again. Now the first one is sniff. Yeah. Smells fine. It smells very fresh. Exactly. <laughs> now let's swirl it. Like I said, don't be afraid to get it up on the sides of the glass. See how I'm getting it? Yeah, there you go. Don't worry about if it spills out a little bit. I won't judge you if you lick the table. Thank you. <laughs> now we got it opened up. Now, let's put our whole nose into it. See what we pull out. Now let's do my favorite part. the best part. Sip. Now what you get there? Yeah. You can definitely get the, the citrus coming through. Now let's try some red wine. Perfect. See the difference. Yeah. Now, this is another easy approaching wine again. Pinot Noir is your lightest of the red grapes. Mm -hmm. So it's a great starter wine for new wine drinkers, I think. Because it's easy to pick up on the stuff. It's not too heavy. It's not too, you know, like tannins and you're like, oh, it's too jammy back here. Okay. So let's practice the four S's again. Let's remember that. Sniff it. Smells 
good. Perfect. Now let's swirl it. And I'm going to give you another hint here on red wine that's easier to pick up. It's really hard sometimes on wine, white wine to pick up. It's called legs. If you ever hear anybody talk about the legs yes, of the wine. I have heard that. The legs of the wine mean how much alcohol is in it. So, as you can see the little legs running down your wine cup. Yeah. That means, as you can see, it's very light. Yeah. So it means it's a little lower in alcohol. Okay. So this one's probably around 13%. Well, in your heavy ones, the dark ones, your big Cabernets and stuff, you'll see dark legs. And those are going to be more in your 14 to 15 range. Now, let's smell. Mm. And let's see what we learn. What we're pulling out of that one. Okay, so instantly, I'm, I know I'm not going in order, but I get some vanilla. Uh -huh. Definitely get the berries. Perfect. And another thing to remember about wine, you're really not wrong. Yeah. You know, because the, the best wine tasters in the world smell different things, taste sure. different things, you know? So don't be afraid to say what you smell. Okay, well, you're the expert. Tell us what you're smelling. Let's see what I get out of this one. Ripe plum. Okay. I get a hint of cranberry. I can smell that. Maybe a little coffee. Mm -hmm. You smell the coffee in there? I do. Nutmeg? A little bit. A little bit? There yeah. you go. There is only, there's only yeah. a hint of it. Yeah, that's what I said. Like I said, this is the thing that you have to practice over and over. Don't be afraid if you don't smell anything. Yeah. That just means you get to try more wine. Now let's taste it. Definitely a really nice light red wine. Exactly. Very approachable. I love red wine, but for people who don't, I would definitely Exactly. Say this, this is what I do. This is if, a really good start. If somebody sits at my bar and they're like, oh, I've never really drank red wine, I always start them with Pinot Noir because it's very approachable, light, doesn't overpower your senses too much. Did you taste anything out of there, though? Um, I did pick up a little bit more on the coffees. At a coffee? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, and then just touch of oak yeah a little yeah. bit yeah vanilla and the oak but i'm really getting the vanilla so yeah no no I mean, exactly yeah it's my taste buds no there's nothing wrong with the vanilla yeah exactly you just you may be more trained to smelling vanilla you and know this you would say is a good date wine too oh this is great easy this one you can also do as a beginning wine too to the meal Perfect. pairs well with calamari so my favorite date is hands down fireplace setting it's warm you're cozy you have some dessert maybe some chocolate or cookies and i mean alcohol is always going to heat up the situation but what would be like a really nice wine just to kind of spice that up i would go with moscato okay it's great you know it's sweet it helps with the chocolate sweetness brings it out more you know it's great by the fireplace because it's not too heavy you don't it's light and kind of an alcohol as much, you know, so you don't get too drunk, but you still feel like good and sexy, you know, yeah. like you're ready, Even you know? for the people with no knowledge of wine, I mean, there's no excuse now. You're ready for the dating world, and I'm pretty sure that you're going to make a lot of men lucky out there with the ladies. So thank you so much for your time, Steven. Of course, my pleasure. You come back and see me. Of course. All right, let's try this one again. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Thank you. For the Thanks, lady? Sir. For you, sir? Thank you. Yeah. Here's our wine list, sir. Oh, hey. Um, if the beautiful lady doesn't mind, I think I'll go ahead and order. Um, we'll start off with the calamari, then uh, we'll do the, um, the woodwork, uh, Pinot Noir. Excellent choice, sir. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> So this is what it comes down to, guys. The power of wine is not merely in its intoxication qualities. It's an instrument for the senses, and that's what women are gonna relate to. What we want is an experience. We want the type of experience that lingers. 
long after the taste of wine has left our lips. It's not about the money or the cost of the actual date. And for the woman who tells you otherwise, she's probably not worth your time. Because a real woman is going to appreciate a memorable experience, despite what the price tag is. The ability to pair a wine, it's going to benefit you beyond just dating. Think about the next time you take a client out, or the next time you have an unexpected visitor. And that extra boost of confidence is the sexiest cologne a man can wear. So elevate your dating experience and trust that the universe will reward you.